What's up, guy? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I can detail out. I just went on a, a really, really fucking good streak. I had like a nine day dry spell where I was stuck at 1,781 because I had a bunch of flakes, like girls that were on their period. One girl had like a mosquito infection, all this other stupid shit. And I was like, fuck that because I'm getting close to 1,800. So I, I stepped up the lead working and spent a bunch more time on it. And I just fucking knocked down. I just made it up to 1,793. <laughs> It was a 19 year old on a Sunday. This was the week before this past week. It was a 19 year old on a Sunday, different 19 year old on the Monday. The Tuesday was a 26 year old and a 23 year old, both new. Wednesday was just repeats. Thursday was a half Japanese. Friday was a half Italian. Saturday was a blonde fake tits. Sunday was a petite blonde. That was up to 1789. And then this past week, there was 28 year old on Monday, fell for me hard, fake tits. I just repeated her again last night. Chick with a really big ass on this past Tuesday. Some chick that was like fucking pressed for time. Literally showed, I, I convinced her to come over anyways, instead of rescheduling. Showed up, fucked, and left, which was awesome. And then this chick here, another 28 year old. That chick wouldn't fucking leave. She wanted to go do like three rounds. She was like still trying to fuck more. I was like, I gotta go work. Um, but now I'm seven away. I actually had one right before the stream, but it wasn't, it didn't close. It was a chick that showed up and was like, it's a beautiful day out. Why don't we go outside and take a walk? That ended up not closing. But yeah, I'm seven away from 1.8K. What is your process for having them come straight over the house with no dates? Um, it's just the way I frame it over text. I can explain it here because I did a video about it. This is really, really important. Here's the order that you do it. You get a phone number from Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge or from Cold Approach. And so now you have the phone number, right? You first, item number one is when are you free to meet up? Which days are you free to meet up? You pick the soonest day and time that she's free and that you're free. Then you put it in your calendar. After you pick the day and time, then you say, do you like wine? And there's a non-alcohol version I'll go into as well. But you say, do you like wine? They typically say yes. And then you say, cool, we could split a bottle of wine at my new apartment. I always say new apartment because it's like an easier sell for them to come over, like a housewarming thing. We could split a bottle of wine at my new apartment and see how the chemistry is. Do you prefer red or white? And that last piece is a decision close in sales. She either says red or she says white and both of them involve her coming over or she gives an objection. Statistically, out of 10 different girls that are down to meet up, about half will agree straight away is what I found with large amounts of data. About half will agree to come straight to the house straight away. So when you say, do you like wine? Yes. Do you prefer red or white? About half will pick red or white. The other half will give either a comfort or you know some kind of safety or hookup objection, typically safety. So they'll say like, oh, I don't feel, I don't feel right coming to a guy's house on the first date. I don't know you, you're a stranger. I prefer we meet in public. I tested all kinds of shit. My number one best response that won from all the testing is you say, LOL, I'm really laid back, don't worry. Bring pepper spray if you're that worried, LMAO. I don't even normally type LMAO, but this is like a, a way to like soften it. She's like, I don't know this guy. I don't know if it's safe to go over there. And you can even include like, I also don't have any sexual expectations. That takes away like the hookup objection because they're either thinking, okay, how do I know I can trust this guy? I don't want to feel slutty for going over to a stranger's house. So if you're like, LOL, bring pepper spray if you're that worried, LMAO, I'm really laid back, don't worry. Usually a lot of them laugh and they're like, okay, cool, I'll come over. So I found that converts about two or three out of the five objectors. So overall, including the objector, handlers, you have seven or eight that are down to come straight to the house. This is a game changer for many reasons. I have over 20 years experience with thousands of dates, okay, closing almost 2000 different girls. I know how to run dates textbook so that guys can close like crazy. Most of my clients are closing one to two new girls per week, which comes out to 50 to 100 girls per year. You can go book a free call with the link in the description so you can get on that path too and you can start closing one to two new a week or at least just have a bunch of good options to pick the best one for your girlfriend. Number one, it saves you all the time from a public date for coffee or drinks. I started doing this around like 400 late count, beginning of 2015. Before that, all my all my dates were in public. And I still did public dates up until like, maybe like two years ago, because Liz was like, oh, I don't want you out on, on dates with these girls. And it wastes time anyways. I don't encourage that you guys don't go out on public dates because a lot of girls will only do a public date. So you have to do it anyways. But the reason why I like this, it saves time, right? For those of you that don't want to spend money on dates, it saves money as well. Number three, it increases your chances of closing because you're going to screen out, right? There's still going to be like those two girls, some two or three out of those 10 that say, oh no, I really just want to meet in public. And what I found, what the data shows is that those girls tend to not want to pull home after the date 
anyways, or they come home and they don't hook up or they come home and like just kiss and don't fuck. So it's a sexual screen as well. Again, like at my level, I'm just looking for banging hot girls with, with not having to put in a lot of effort. Back in the beginning, it's important to cultivate your cold approach skills. It's important to cultivate how well you run a public date, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't recommend that you guys, you know, like I'll, I'll just say, like, say she still insists on public. I'll say, all right, let's just leave it then. In Portuguese, say, Deixa para la, like, forget it. Some of them, like that 28 year old, with fake tits she was like a real estate agent she's like fine i'll come over blah 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 because she's like, i can't believe you you won't meet me but a lot of girls just won't they'll be like fine whatever i'm not going to meet you then if you don't drink right i quit drinking almost five years ago you say we could relax and talk more at my new apartment and see how the chemistry is and then optionally you can say beautiful view right that helps like sweeten the deal like oh well, there's also a nice view and that's a reason why i want you to come over we could relax and talk more in my new apartment and see how the chemistry is. Beautiful view, smiley face. And then I say, since there's no alcohol involved and you still need a decision close, I say, do you need me to call you an Uber, right? A lot of the girls don't have cars here, but even if you're in the States or, or, or some other place, a lot of girls are gonna need you to call them an Uber. So they either say, yes, I need you to call me an Uber. No, I'll drive, or they give the objection but it's about the same conversion rate as the wine. So the wine thing is unnecessary. In the beginning, I was like, oh fuck, when I quit drinking, I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna do dates straight to the house? And you can modify it. You can have coffee or tea at your house. Oh, we can have a coffee or tea, which do you prefer? I have clients that say like, we could cook salmon or we could cook chicken, you know, and they're cooking with the girl at the house. You have to keep it structurally consistent, but you can swap in and out the details. I have another client, he has like a, an ice cream place like right near his apartment. So he says, oh, we can meet for gelato and then go up to my place. And the gelato takes like 10 minutes, right? And then that eliminates a lot of the resistance to coming up to the house. If you have an, a roof deck, on your apartment building, you can frame it to the roof deck, which eliminates some resistance of coming right to your house. If you have a balcony within your apartment, you can say, oh, we can hang out on the balcony and split a bottle of wine. And if they're like, oh, I can't come into your apartment, you can counter with, oh, well, it's not really like my apartment, my apartment, we're gonna be on the balcony. One other consideration is if you have neighbors and or security in your building, use that in the objection response as well. Oh, don't worry, I'm really laid back, bring pepper spray if you're that worried, LMAO, and I have neighbors in my building, and I have security. All right, like my building in Sao Paulo, there's like 24 seven security. So you just say, I have security, you know, you don't need to worry. It's optional though, you don't have to say that. And then the girl literally shows up, you fucking put on music. I offer them, I have alcohol even though I don't drink. I offer them a beer or water. A lot of them just take water or they have like one drink. And then we get to know each other five or 10 minutes and I start escalating. And if they're like, oh, let's slow down, you build more comfort. It's literally that simple. And then you just keep repeating that and you keep scheduling and scheduling and scheduling. So this past week, actually like the past two weeks now, I went from 1781 to 1793. It was just simply a matter of getting a whole bunch of leads and then just clever scheduling with all of them. When are you free? When are you free? You're always hammering. When are you free? When are you free? When are you free? If they come back, oh, hey, sorry, I was busy. Oh, no problem. When are you free to meet up? And I have like certain follow-up messages if they're not responding to that, but you just keep hammering each one of them without looking desperate or needy. Obviously there's a specific way to do it and you're just pushing them all into plans and you wanna see them as soon as possible. And you're also integrating the technique with double and triple stacking time slots, which basically makes you immune to flakes. When you have like a 7 p.m. time slot and you put two or three girls there, you're sending specific reminder sequences the night before and morning of. And if you are doubting what, whether or not that's necessary, think about when you have like a doctor appointment or a dentist appointment and they're like, hey, I'm just confirming you have your appointment tomorrow. And you're like, oh shit, I completely forgot I had an appointment tomorrow. And then now you know, and then they confirm again in the morning and now you're doubly reminded. So you have to confirm every one of your dates the night before and morning of. It helps reduce flake percentage, but you can never eliminate flakes because things come up in people's schedules. There's a lot of things outside of your control. But once you do those messages to reduce flaking, you'll still have a flake or two or, or more sometimes, depending on how many you schedule. Then that way, like you, you had two girls for seven o'clock, one of them flakes, now you're good. Like I almost look at flakes as like a, a relief because I'm, I'm way over scheduling the schedule and I'm, I'm stacking rotation girls on too and everybody has priorities. And the way the schedule shakes out, depending on who cancels and reschedules, then I just pick who I'm gonna see. It's rare that like a girl flakes and it like fucks the time slot because I'm double and triple stacking them. And then if you get to 7 p.m. and you still have two or three that are confirmed, then you move them to later that night or the next day. 
right? You're rescheduling on them. That's kind of what's happening there in a nutshell. And I have it all mapped out. And if you guys want to plug into that and take advantage of it and start closing at a very, very high level, very quickly and consistently, book a call. I mean, that's what I offer is to plug you in the, the clients that join the program. I plug them into that system and then they're just relentlessly fucking executing and crushing it which is awesome. If you're ready to have a real expert help you and permanently fix this problem, get on a free 30 minute call. You can also go check out Leads Machine at sexleadmachine.com. We'll put up the URL and the link is in the description for that as well. That gives you all my text message scripts for all situations, all my online game messaging scripts for apps like Tinder and exactly how to run and close your dates. So let me know what you think in the comments about all this, like the video, subscribe, and I will see you guys on a video soon. Take care. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. Just take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.